And what happens is we leave the door open and we become weak and we don't stay in God's word. What happens is our minds begin to think the wrong things. That's the reason why I said you need to renew your mind with the washing of the word. That's the reason why I said you need to pray continually. Pray. You need to make this thing a part of your life every single day. Like every morning you would not imagine getting up and not brushing your teeth. How many of you would go to work and not brush your teeth? And now one person, Ryan, but I want to tell you something. You would not even begin to think about that. But we will go all day long and never speak to God and never pray and never look at his word. But oh my God, we would never go anywhere without brushing our teeth or combing our hair. How many of you would go five days without taking a shower? Erica would. She's sick. But I want to tell you something. Most, most of us would not do that because we get body odors. There's parts of us that we have to keep clean. We brush our teeth and brush our hair. There's certain habits that you and I have formed in our life because they're good for us. And one of the things that we need to do is get a hold of God's Word. My mother went a while back, uh, a couple of years ago, we went and we did a will. And I took her to a lawyer's office and I told him to give my mom whatever it is that she wants, how she wants things to go. We are her children. She has five children. And I left the room and she said, I want this amount of money to go here, this amount of money to go to this child, and this amount of money to go, I don't want as much money to go to, I, know she, I knew she was going to say it because one child is not as close to her. I'm not, I said, Mom, you should give that child something. But I'm leaving the room now, you can do what you want. So my mother, with a lawyer, predestination is like this. She determined when she dies what she's going to give us. We don't know yet what she's going to give us, but we're going to get something. It's a gift to us like salvation. So in that room on paper, legalized like a written will and testament like the Bible is, my mother predetermined who will get what. Now we're all her children and on the day that she dies, a couple of days after, they'll call us in. They'll have a director of the estate. One child has been chosen to do that. That means they're the overseer of, of what my mom wants. And we come in and it's already all written out. And no matter how much a child says, up, go, wait a minute, you gave her more money than you. That's not right. She gets more money than you. And she's going to get this and she's going to get the car. That's not right. They can complain. They can gripe. They can cry. But nothing's going to change because she's already determined. My sister, one of my sisters, I'll be surprised if she even comes. Now, the gift is still hers. But if she doesn't come, does she get the gift? You have to come and accept the gift. If I give you a gift and it's in a box and you don't receive it, that's your fault. It's not that the gift is not there. You have to take the gift. That's what salvation is. That's what predestination is like. God had a plan for each one of us. And when we look at the scripture from the beginning to the end, we can understand what God says. When Adam sinned, when Adam sinned, sin entered the world. So how did sin come into the world? We just read it. Look at that. When Adam sinned, Sin entered into the world. Adam's sin brought death. So death spread to everyone. Say everyone. everyone. Now is everyone everyone or not? I ask you, is every or is there a secret interpretation of that? Is everyone everyone? Okay. How did sin come to us? Through Adam. We just read that. Through one man's sin, then he brought death to Everyone, and it spread to every single one of us for everyone sinned. It was so funny when I had my first baby. I thought Daniel was perfect. Perfect. I, I never taught Daniel to lie. I never taught him to hit somebody. I can remember back in the day, we didn't have plastic bottles. That was a long time ago. Okay, we had, matter of fact, he was wearing cough diapers, but I washed the poo poo out the toilet. And he had glass bottles. And you can't even imagine that. That's like a thousand years ago. And I can remember when he would finish his bottle, a little boy that was a perfect baby that was so tender and sweet that was only nine months old, he would take that bottle like someone in jail, and he would take that glass bottle and run it up and down, rake it back and forth, and he'd go, ah, mommy! Then he'd do it back and forth, and he would scream. And one time I said to him, you are not getting any more milk. No more. Lay down. Night, night. And I put his bottle over in the corner and laid him down. I patted him in a few minutes. Or, <sighs> he took that bottle and threw it against the wall. At nine months old, and he broke it. I didn't teach him to do that. See, from the time we're tiny, 
sin has been passed down to us. And God knew that it was so he made provision for us. Look at Romans 3.16. Look at Romans 3.16. For all, everybody say all. all. For all have sinned. Is all all? For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So when I hear people say things like, well, I'm not a bad person. And, you know, I, I was talking to a gentleman one time. He told me flat out. I was telling him, I said, you know, you need God. And he said, uh, I'm a good person. I've never killed anybody. I'm not a drunk. I don't, drunk, I don't get drunk and drive. I, I don't steal from people. I work and provide for my family. I said, that's good. That's your righteousness. But your righteousness is not good enough. You need Christ for all of sin and come short of the glory of God. Here's the talking point of that. Sin will always leave us coming up short. Because all of sin, it comes short. It's like you're reaching, but you can't get it. You're See, by yourself, without the Holy Spirit drawing you, convicting you, and showing you your sins, you're going to come up short in yourself every time. You're going to be short of God's glory. It's just beyond your grasp. Humanity is full of sin, and they're born into it. You and I did not have, don't miss this, you and I did not have a choice to be born. We didn't have a choice in our birth. Whether we would be born or not. But we do have a choice about the new birth. About the rebirth. It's called being reborn. Being born again. We have a choice in that. You didn't wake up and say, I want to be born. You were just born. Some of you had accidents. Maybe your parents just got together. And had some accident. You're not an accident to God. God knew you before you were ever in your mother's womb. That doesn't surprise us that God foreknew us. He said, Jeremiah, I knew you before you were in your mother's womb. That's not a surprise. Oh, God knew. When he's all knowing. Of course he knew you before you were in your mother's womb. He knew and he knows you. And, and, and God's word says you didn't have a choice to be born, but you have a choice about being reborn. Let's, let's look. Yes, there are consequences. Let's go to Isaiah 51. I'm going to give you a lot of scripture now. This is important. It doesn't matter my opinion. I want to prove everything from the word of God. There are consequences. I want to say that again. There are consequences for your sin and for my sin. Not knowing God. Look what it says. Isaiah 59, 1, 2. Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save. I want you to hear that again. He's, he's reaching out to you. His arm is not too short to save. His ear is not too dull. What? What? You're calling on me? I, louder. I can't hear you. Be more desperate. His arm's not too short that he can't reach. Or his ear too dull to hear you. But, everybody say but. 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 And this is a big but right here. Your, my, iniquities have separated us from God. It's not that God's not reaching. It's not that God's not listening. There's something between you and God. There was something between me and God before I gave myself to him. There was something there. And you know what it was? It was my sin. My sin separated me from God. It left me coming up short for the very thing that I wanted. I wanted to experience God's forgiveness and his grace and his glory. But all of sin had come short of the glory of God. And his arm was reaching and his ear was listening. But my sin that I kept there separated me from God. And look what, I, not just that, listen what it says. Your sins. Your sins, my sins, your sins. God's talking, your, when he does, that's a direct quote to you. He's saying it to you. Your sins have hidden his face from you. So that, so listen to what he says. He's hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. God wants to hear you, but he, God is a just God. God is a holy God, and he will not be entangled in sin. He didn't come to live in sin. He came to free you from sin. And so he won't allow it because he made provision for it not to be there. Your sin and my sin separated us from God. Romans 3.23. And this one is so powerful. We can all, most of us in the room can throw it out there like nothing. For the wages. Do you know what that is? That's payment. I expect a paycheck. I work here. You have a job. I bet you don't go on Friday and you say, you know what? It's on me. I work all week. It's all. Don't worry about it. No sweat. Of course not. When you do a task or a job, you expect a payment. Am I right? Yeah. But we are so foolish when it comes to sin. We think we can do anything we want and there's no payment. But I want you to see what God's word said for the wages, the payment. 
For sin is death. He's not saying tomorrow you're going to drop dead. The next day you're going to drop dead. You're spiritually dead. But eventually you'll die physically. But he's saying you're spiritually dead in your sins. For the wages, the payment of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. He's telling you how you can get eternal life. He always gives a but. He shows this side and that side. He said the wages of sin is death. But. The gates of alternative, the gift of God is eternal life. He offers it to everyone. You get it through Jesus Christ. How do you get rid of that sin? Jesus Christ came to take it on the cross. Through your repentance and acceptance of who he is. He, God, is patient with you. Why? Don't miss this. Don't miss this. When you're thinking of the reason why I told you what predestination was in the beginning, so you can see through the scripture. Look what he says. Not wanting or willing for anyone to be, to, I'm sorry, to perish. He's not willing that anyone, he's patient because he's not wanting or willing for anyone to perish. Well, if you've already been predestined, why would that even bother him? Why would he even put that scripture in there? He says to you, I'm patient toward you because I'm not wanting or willing anyone. Who is anyone? Is anyone everyone? Is anyone, everyone, and all? Is anyone, everyone, and all, and everybody? I'm asking you. Is that what the Word teaches? Absolutely. God is patient with you, not wanting or willing anyone to perish. He said, I'm not willing. I have a will, and I don't want anyone to perish. But that everyone, there's that word again. Oops. Everyone would come to repentance. If you can't repent, why would you say everyone? One needs to come to repentance. I'm asking you a question. Because it's not really that one of you, not one of you, he predestined his son to come for your salvation. But you have a choice in the matter because he's patient with you and he's not really, he doesn't want anyone to perish, but that everyone would come to repentance. If you look what it says, submit yourselves. Then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Is submitting yourself to God a choice? Yes. I'm asking you a question. We have one that said yes. Submitting, he's giving you two choices. He says submit yourself then to God. Resist the devil. If you are already predestined for what you will be, why do you need to resist the devil? I just want to say it again. You gotta look at the entire scripture. Submit yourself to God. Is that a decision? Yes. I choose to submit. He's saying you can resist the devil all day long. The devil ain't going nowhere. The devil's going nowhere until you and I submit, which is a choice. Submit ourselves to God. We can resist the devil. And look what happens when we submit to God. It's a decision, a choice, willpower, and we resist the devil through submitting to God, then he runs off. That's a choice. That we're not free moral agents. Predestination cannot say that we're not free moral agents. We don't have a choice. We have a choice that's in the word. I want to say this to you. Don't miss this. If man can resist sin at all, I want to say it again. If man can resist sin at all, it proves willpower on his part. No, no. Love the Lord your God and keep his requirements, his decrees, his laws. Now, there we go. There's one. That's Old Testament. Laws. Okay, let's just say he still has requirements and he has decrees. And look, in his commandments, always. His commands have not changed. In the Old Testament, he didn't like you murdering people. In the New Testament, he doesn't like you murdering people. In the Old Testament, he didn't like adultery. In the New Testament, he doesn't like adultery. In the Old Testament, he didn't like fornication. In the New Testament, he doesn't like fornication. Are you getting the message? In the Old Testament, he hated sin. In the New Testament, he hates sin. God has requirements. Now, he's talking to the elect. Deuteronomy thirty nineteen. Moses gave this instruction to God's chosen people. The elect. Chosen. You won't even chosen. But look at what he tells them. This will help you understand about predestination that it's not right. 
Because God's word says this. This day, I call the heavens and the earth as witness against you. That I have set before you. Now this is Moses talking to the people when he came down from the mountain. God said this to him. Tell the people this. I have set before you life and death. Blessings and curses. Now, what's the word? Choose. Say, what's the word? Choose. Ooh. Now choose life so that you and your children may live. You must choose. God has provided like my mother. My mother made a will, a statement. It's locked in a safe. And everything in there belongs to us if we get it. If we don't want it, we don't show up, we don't get it. But she planned a long time ago for us, she predestined for us to have these gifts. Just like God did, but you have to choose. Philippians 2, 6, 7, 8, look at this. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset. Now, we're going to talk about the mindset of Christ. What was his mindset? Look at the scripture. Philippians 2, 6, 7, 8. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Jesus Christ, who being in the very nature of God. Jesus was in the nature of God. Did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. In other words, he knew he was the son of God, but he emptied himself of all deity. And he did never use who he was to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing. Who made himself nothing? Jesus, as a human man on earth, he chose to make himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. Jesus became human like you and I. So when we look at Jesus, we can see what we're like, right? Because he came, are you staying with me? Human nature, Jesus was on earth. He said he was in the likeness of God, but he said he had a human nature. Look what he says, being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself. I ask you, when you decide to humble yourself, is that a choice? He humbled himself. See, because now he's not acting as God. He, he was God in the flesh, came on earth like a man, like a woman. He came with natural feelings, just like you and I. He walked this earth, ate, drank, went to sleep, was tempted. Everything you and I are, that's just the way Jesus was. Look what he said. He humbled himself be, by becoming obedient to death, by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. He had a choice to make. He had to become obedient. He had to choose to lay his life down. And Matthew 26, 39 says this. So look, we can look at Jesus. This is so powerful. As I'm quoting, don't miss this. This is so powerful. We look at Jesus just before he went to the cross. You remember he went into the garden all by him. He took some of the disciples. He said, hey, you guys, y'all over there, you, you guys coming over here closer. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to pray. Now, I, I want you to look at this scripture because it, this is Jesus praying in the garden just before he was crucified. This is what he says. Now, remember, we're talking about Jesus as a human nature, like us, like humanity, like us. He became like us. Thank you, Rena. Look what he says. Look. This is what he prayed. My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. If this can be taken, Father, please, if it can be taken, take this cup from me. Yet not as I will. Not my will. Not what I want. And he said, that's what he said, I'm in human form. So does humanity have will? If he came in human form, I'm trying to show you the word of God. You guys are acting like you're all somewhere lost. Are you listening to me? Listen to what he says. Father, if it's possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet not as I will. And we just read the scriptures before that he came in human form like a, hu like a human being. So he's saying that's what we are. He's like us. And he had a will. He said, but not as I will like you want. And you know how many times he prayed that? Three times. The Bible said he prayed it and prayed some more about this stuff. Got up, walked around, came back, prayed it again. Went around again, came back and prayed it again. You and I need to pray and cry out to God till we lay our own will down and become like the Father. Are you listening to me? You have a will. I just read it to you. 